Thank you for coming today. I uh, wanted to ask you a question about portfolio construction and, and uh, just hear your comments on diversification. In the last session, there was a lot of discussion about diversification and the importance of it. Um, my sense is that you're more of a concentrated investor. Some other investors are like that. Where, where does that, what kind of role does diversification play or how do you think of it in building a portfolio? Well, you always have to have some kind of a diversification uh, because A, you could be wrong, and B, even if you're right, you're betting on statistics. In other words, the future is essentially a, uh, a distribution of all probabilities. Say, say you have a 90% conviction, and you're right, and that event is 90%, but then 10% chance it happened. And so you don't want to uh, that ten percent to get you out of the game. So you do need to diversification. On the other hand, that uh, recognizing uh, is extremely rare to find no-brainer great opportunities. Extremely rare. In fact, you have to wait for a long time before the fat pitch to come to you. Um, so when that happens. You certainly do not want to diversify away the opportunity that you have been waiting patiently for a long time to discover for some really inferior other opportunities. So investment is essentially is the opportunity cost. So one uh, other uh, alternative have to really justify itself by comparing with the one you already have. And so when you make that comparison, you tend not to really diversify too much. You would find a few very, very good ones that have a very high uh, conviction and let it rise. And so, yes, you, you, you do a little bit of both. So, in, in that example, and, and you're kind of hitting precisely what I'm getting at, it, in, in a very high conviction idea, what do you feel the, the limits are in terms of you know, how much you could be invested? In well, I want to say, as I said, that all decisions ought to be looked through the concept of opportunity cost is what else can I do with the cash I have? And cash, by the way, is a really a fundamentally important asset. And if I don't really find anything else, or if I find a bunch of other opportunity inferior to cash, then I would keep it in cash. And so I, I would say that, uh, <clears throat> that I, I, it never bothers me to hold a large amount of cash if I can't find a great opportunities. At the same time, when I find, say, one good idea, so I'll let it be a, a little bit bigger percentage of the, uh, of, the, uh, of the portfolio, and then everything else will compare with what I already have, which is cash. And sometimes holding cash can be the result of a bottom-up research. I always believe that's the case.